up guys, Stock Easy here and today I want to talk about two of my favorite cameras and the settings that I use when I'm shooting street photography. Um, I've been seeing a lot of videos about camera settings lately on the internet and I've been questioning the reasons why they set them up the way that they do. So today I want to take you guys through a quick easy rundown of how I shoot when I'm shooting street. All these buttons make sense and they're going to help get the camera out of your way so you can just focus on shooting. Also, I want to talk about the accessories and everything that's on my camera that I use for street. First off, these, these two cameras are very similar, very alike. Um, if anything, the X100F is like the X-Pro2 Mini. Uh, I love it when I don't want to have to think about what lenses I'm bringing. So lately, this has been my main street shooter. I actually use this for a lot of professional work. I have an X-T2 as well. And right now I'm filming on an X-70. So I am a Fujiholic, whatever you want to call it. So I am, very addicted to the Fuji X-Series systems. I think they're great cameras for beginners, for pros, intermediate, whatever you may be. You should get one of these cameras because, I mean, they're incredible. So, on my Fuji X100F, I used to have in silver. I sold, I bought in black because I just like having all the black systems whatever. I am not a big fan of the grip that people place on these cameras. I think it makes it a little bit too bulky and part of buying this is the aesthetic reasons. It's a very beautiful camera. It's very sexy and when you put that grip on it, it's like rubber and well, I just don't like it. Uh, for about the same price, you can get the leather half case. This is just half of it actually. It's a full case. I apologize. You can get the leather full case. This is a half of it and this works just as good as the grip as you can see here. It adds a little more girth to the camera and I mean this just looks it looks really nice, you know? And then it's got this nice little snap here that you can open this up. And the battery door, if you choose to leave it open, is actually magnetic. So as you can see there, it sticks to the bottom of the leather case, which is a pretty dope feature if you ask me. So I can actually just close this up and just forget about it. When I need a battery, it's already open rather than closing this and then having to go in here and blah, 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 blah. But again, this feels really nice and comfortable in the hand and it's going to protect your camera from getting any scuffs from the metal rings that are on here. Secondly, this strap. It's one of my favorite straps. I hate seeing straps that are heavy duty on such beautiful tiny cameras. And this is actually from Sailor Straps. This might be the Skinny Jimmy, I believe it's called. Um, these are really nice braided rope straps with leather accents on them. Um, it usually costs about $20 and if I'm not using these you can find a cheaper version on Amazon. This was maybe $15 and as you can see it still has the leather. It's not as malleable. It's kind of stiff rope. It's not the nicest and the braids are a little bit tighter. On my X-Pro2 I have another one. This one's a little big. It's the El Capitan I think it is and as you can see the difference in the rope sizes here. You can buy different rope sizes on there but their straps are incredible everywhere I go. People always ask me where I got my strap from because it's really hard to find a nice strap and then go get yourself a guitar strap for a camera like this. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, <clears throat> next up on the camera, I have this JJC round uh, lens hood and normally I would be filming with this Black Promis 1.8. I would normally put it on the camera but I wanted to show you guys what I shoot with in the streets. So that's a Black Promis 1.8 with a JJC rounded lens hood. And these are just some regular buttons that I probably bought from newer. It's like a 20 pack of buttons. You're gonna lose these like crazy. But I like to keep my camera purely black, super simple, super stealth. And as you can see, I walk around like this, get out of your way. So let's get into the settings and how I shoot in the street. For one, I always, always have my camera set to black and white. I think for me, it's less distracting and it puts me more in the mood to shoot. Shooting in New York City, it's very gray, and sometimes the colors can take you out of the moment if things are not fully saturated or they just look a little bit muted. Today is an overcast day, so shooting in black and white can uh, push your creativity a little bit further, at least it does for me. Even when I'm shooting in portraits, I shoot in black and white because I think that it allows me to focus more on my composition rather than getting distracted by all the things that are happening in the background. So now I'm always shooting raw and JPEG and the reason for that is when I shoot in black and white they always come out in color when you use the raw files and if I love the black and white the most then I'll just keep that one on the side but for the most part I usually delete my JPEGs and go with the raw files because I like to process my own images. In terms of the settings that I use on the back of the camera I mean I'm not going to tell you all my curve settings that should be up to you but I do 
like to shoot with uh, a point one on the highlights and a point, point one on the shadows to make it pop a little bit and add some contrast. And sometimes I'll put the sharpness up depending on what it is that I'm shooting. But what I really wanted to talk about today is the button setup that I use. Again, these cameras are very similar, but I'm gonna start off with the one thing that is very different on the two um, that is one of the most useful features that I don't ever see anybody use. So on the front of these cameras here, there's a button and this, this switch is usually used to control um, the hybrid viewfinder from switching to an EVF to an OVF or the hybrid. Um, and on this camera, it's exactly the same, but the difference is the mechanical shutter on this is damn near silent, almost silent. So I'm gonna see if you guys can hear this right now. I'll switch it over. And then we're gonna listen to the mechanical shutter on the X-Pro2. Beautiful sound, very sexy. What I like to do with this front button is I have it set for the shutter type. So let's say I'm in a situation where I know someone's gonna hear my mechanical shutter, right? Very loud, too loud, I'm on a train, it's very tight. I click this button one time and boom, electronic shutter, very silent. Nobody even knows I'm taking pictures now. Again, another click takes it to mechanical plus electronic. And then one click gets back to mechanical and then another click gets it to electronic. So I know this, I know where I'm at because I can count it and I use it enough, that, you know, it's second nature to me. And that's something that's important about setting up your camera when you're shooting things like street photography is because you want to set it up so that everything is second nature, right? Um, <clears throat> so I haven't changed too much about the camera, but um, on the top here, I have this function button at the very top set to my photometry. So depending on the lighting situation, I can very easily change if I see what's happening. If I wanna have really dark shadows, I'll switch it to average instead of having it at multi so that I know I can read the environments and I just hit this button and I'm selecting what it is that I want very quickly. Um, on the down dial, I have my AF modes. So most of the time if I'm walking down the street and I'm shooting pretty fast, I like to switch this and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go back and forth between you know, the single point and zone. I don't ever use wide tracking, I don't know why, but zone uh, is great for if you're on the move and what I'll do is I'll switch between single and continuous, right? So I'm walking down the street, continuous with zone is perfect because now I'm holding on the button, it's tracking everyone and when I see the right photo, boom, I just hit the button and it's there, I'm in focus, I have nothing to worry about, it's been tracking the subject the whole time, right? Now if I see a scene or a person or environment that I'm trying to get a little bit closer to and creep on, all I have to do is switch that down to single. Sometimes I'll keep it in zone, but if I know I'm gonna be spending some time in a certain location, I'll hit that down button real quick and go into single point. Now I'm ready for more relaxed, focused, intentional shooting, you know? I can spend my time sitting there adjusting my composition, but then again, if I see someone moving really fast, quickly, I push up on this to quick settings and then right down to zone and I'm ready to go. I'm tracking everything that's going on. Very basic stuff. And again, I've been doing this for so long now that it's second nature to me. So the right dial here is for my ISO settings, the auto ISO settings, because I'd like to shoot an aperture priority a lot. Typically I have my ISO set to auto and my shutter speed set to auto, and then I'll just be messing around with my aperture. But the Joel Mayowitz approach is to shoot at ISO 1600. So I let this figure it out and go all the way to 1600 to ensure that my shutter speed is always high enough to freeze action. I'm not a big fan of blurry photos. I don't care if they're not sharp. I just don't like motion in my photos. Whatever it is that I'm trying to do, I wanna stop the motion, especially in the daytime. You know, once the sun starts to go down, all I gotta do is hit down, and now I'm in the bracket for uh, ISO 200 to 6400. It's very simple. And on occasion, what I'll do is I'll set, um, if you hold on any of these buttons, you can jump right into the program mode and you can change these. And I'll set this function one back and forth if I'm like going to a coffee shop to sit down and review some photos. I'll click that so that I go into my Wi-Fi mode very easily. I can download my images, review them, edit them, throw them on Instagram. But for the most part, that is as simple as I keep my camera. I try not to get all crazy with it. I don't usually set my own white balance. On occasion, I will if I find it necessary. I have some other filters that I use, like an antique suede. You have to set your own white balance when you're using that kind of thing, otherwise the camera and it'll compensate for it. So there are moments like that, but that's more complicated stuff for now. This is the simplest way that I think you can set up your camera 
and get it out of your way. And once you put it into practice, it'll become second nature to you. I know right now it probably sounds super confusing to be like, oh, you're switching between continuous and single and zone focus and single point, but that's what it is when you're shooting street photography. You have to be prepared and ready for all those things. So you have to learn those settings and figure out how to work them best to the way that you shoot. So anyway, I'm gonna show you guys some photos that I've shot with this X100F. Let me know what you guys think. I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm thinking about showing uh, the next video I'll be doing is talking about this backpack, which to me is one of the greatest camera backpacks ever made. And I have a lot of camera backpacks. So get ready for this one next. Stock easy here. Follow me on Instagram, uh, hit a like button and subscribe because I, I really would like to be encouraged to shoot more videos for you guys and talk about street photography and portrait work. I mean, the world of photography is so vast. There's so much to talk about, but I'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.